as chair. And I'm joined by uh, colleagues from the board, from the executive team and my non-exec director colleagues, and also by chief executives of our sites. I joined Bart's Health last October, recognising the challenges faced, but encouraged and inspired by the way the organisation and its leaders had worked to improve what Bart's Health can offer, providing safe and compassionate care, improving financial resilience and developing our group model to support our individual sites and to work with partners for the good of our patients. And for this, I'd like to pay tribute to Dame Alwyn Williams, who retired as our Chief Executive this summer. We miss her, but I can see that her influence lives on in the example she set and the teams that she built. And I was pleased that we were able to appoint Shane Degaris, our, de our then Deputy CEO, as Alwyn's successor, and Matthew Trainer, the Chief Executive of BHIUT, as the Deputy Group CEO. And I'd like to take the opportunity also to thank Shane and his executive team for their leadership. So today's meeting provides us with an opportunity to reflect on the many achievements and challenges over the last year and to look to the future. And we'll shortly move on to formally adopt the annual report and the accounts, after which we'll hear from Shane, who will set out some of our achievements from the past year, as well as our priorities for 2022-23. And then finally, we'll have some time for people to ask questions. And if you do have a question you'd like to ask, please could you input it into the chat function on the right-hand side of your screen. And then when it comes to the Q&A section at the end of the meeting, I can make sure we get the right person on the board to provide you with a response. So just by way of introduction, it's been a tough couple of years navigating our way through the pandemic. And it's worth remembering that numbers of COVID-19 patients and staff affected have remained very high throughout 2021-22, with the peaks during the winter providing particular challenges. And as the pandemic starts to recede, we can reflect on its impact and on the number of striking features which emerge and will inform the future. And those include the stark issues of health inequalities highlighted during particularly the peaks of COVID, and therefore the need to focus on equity and inclusion in all our recovery plans. The crucial role of not just frontline, but also support staff, and the need to be mindful of staff wellbeing as a key driver of how well we can serve our patients and what a good experience we can give them. And the fragility of access to urgent care and to primary care, as has been evidenced by the record numbers of emergency department attendances this summer. I've really enjoyed getting to know the Trust over the last year, and in particular our talented and dedicated staff. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with them and with our partners to continue improving services across all boroughs for our patients. And we've got some exciting opportunities in the next year or so. In 2023, we'll celebrate the 900th anniversary of the foundation of Tite St. Bartholomew's Hospital. And to mark that anniversary with our partners in Bart's charity, we've launched a series of landmark fundraising projects spanning world-leading medicine and research, well-being for our dedicated NHS teams and education. And together, they will benefit millions of Londoners and secure that proud heritage for future generations. Having in August secured the funding necessary to complete the enabling works, I hope that in 2023, we'll be able to press ahead with making the new Whips Cross Hospital a reality so that we're able to provide the facilities that staff and patients so greatly need. The plan is ready. We've got great support from partners across the area to transform, transform services as well as to provide new buildings. We just need the Treasury to give us the green light to make this a reality. 
Through our partnership with Queen Mary University of London, supported by Bart's charity, we'll continue our work to build a new life sciences campus in Whitechapel that will provide a space for researchers, scientists and clinicians to work directly alongside businesses and entrepreneurs, and in doing so, help to create the healthcare solutions for tomorrow. And that will allow us to deliver groundbreaking innovations more quickly to reduce health inequalities and to transform patient care in East London and the wider UK. Despite these exciting plans, it's fair to say that the year ahead will be a challenging one, and one in which we'll be working within an extremely tight financial envelope. And this is where being bold to innovate and to do things differently will be crucial. And of course, we can't do it on our own. It's clear to me that our patients' needs don't stop or start at the door of our hospitals. And to do the best for them and to make sure that we're spending every pound as effectively as possible, we need to look outwards to our partners in other NHS bodies, in local authorities and in communities themselves. The changes that will help to bring closer working between health and social care are emerging in the new role of NHS North East London, the new integrated care board, which is driving the delivery of better, more efficient and more joined up care for patients. And as part of this, our collaboration with BHIUT provides an engine room for delivering real changes for patients. We'll be focusing very much on partnership working. Through our borough partnerships, where we can take real action to level up the playing field for all our communities. Bringing health organisations and local authority services to get closer together also means that we'll have genuine opportunities to look at the wider determinants of good health, which we know impact significantly on health services. And we'll be able to think far more holistically about our residents and their individual needs. One of the reasons I was so excited to take on the role of Chair in Common here at Barts and at BHRUT was the potential that our two organisations working in close partnership offers. And we're starting to see and to deliver tangible benefits. We're working to tackle waiting lists so our patients can access the care they need as quickly as possible and as close to home as possible. And we're sharing best practice in urgent and emergency care to ensure all five a and are seeing patients as quickly as possible. And there are other benefits of joint working, such as our green plans as well, taking our responsibility to the environment and to our neighbourhood seriously. Importantly as well, by working together, we will reduce variation in access to care, reducing health inequalities for all our residents. So these are challenging, but exciting times. I'd just like to finish with some thank yous. To my board colleagues for your support, your leadership, and your genuine desire and commitment to achieve the best for our patients. To our staff, without whom we would not be able to do what we do, and who work tirelessly to provide our patients with the best care possible. To our patient partners and volunteers who dedicate so much of their time to support staff and patients alike. To Bart's charity for helping us to make a difference with those crucial extras. And to all those working alongside us across North East London. So I will now uh, take it that we will formally adopt the annual report and uh, accounts. And there'll be the opportunity if anybody has any questions, as I say, later on to ask those. And now, now ask Shane to give us a review of 2021-22 and also to talk about our priorities for the coming year. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'll take you through um, some of the things we've seen this year, a bit of a look back and also a bit of a look forward. Um, and it's been a very, very interesting year, that's, that's for sure. So in terms of our activity, um, the numbers speak for themselves, over 2.3 million patient treatments, um, 6,000 a day. Um, and crucially, 
numbers of course changed significantly during COVID, um, but essentially our activity is right back to where we were um, before the pandemic. And, and that of course is a very, very busy set of hospitals right across um, the patch we operate from. Um, we're also managing to see patients faster. Um, so nearly half a million patients in A&E, as I've described, nearly 80% of those seen within four hours um, consistently in the top five best performing trusts in terms of the largest trusts in the country. Um, a really good set of performance around cancer standards and cancer waiting times for everything from diagnosis to being seen um, more quickly. And I think the thing we've struggled with, and as I'll come on to this in a bit in a second, is um, getting back to those patients who are waiting the longest for outpatients and for their elective surgery. And um, there's been a lot of hard work on this over the last year coming out of the pandemic. Um, and I'll touch on that just in a second. Worth just showing a little bit about um, that we still do have some patients with COVID. The graph takes us to the end of April, but we do still have some patients here today, a lower number than that, of course. But you can see from the two peaks we had, it's interesting to look back and the sort of two main peaks, then the, the, the third one, which obviously had the impact of vaccines, just how many patients we had in our hospitals um, at any one time. And it was a, a huge effort from all the staff and partners in our wider system to um, manage them so effectively. I touched on long waiters and you can see the number of long waiting patients back to April 21, um, gradually increasing as everything locked down um, during those, uh, those key waves. And we really stopped all routine elective um, and outpatients um, services along with the rest of the NHS across the country. And I'm pleased to say, and you can see from the graph, that it's been a significant effort to get those numbers right down. Um, still too many, um, and we continue to this very day to work extremely hard to reduce those uh, numbers and make sure patients can get seen as quickly as possible. Um, huge amount of work transforming patient care amongst this time. Um, we just pulled out a few examples uh, on this slide here. So a, a, a huge piece of work around moving to electronic prescribing. So no more handwritten um, medicine scripts. Um, everything is electronic and a, a, a massive piece of work. Um, easier for the staff, but crucially much safer, um, a much safer service for patients um, and for our own staff. Some great work at St. Bartholomew's around electric balloon technology to treat patients with irregular heart rhythms and some artificial intelligence, again, looking to detect heart disease um, far more quickly. And then an interesting one at the Royal London, virtually transporting medical students into a ward um, to follow a lecture live um, on the rounds. Um, again, a different way of teaching and educating um, our, our staff and students. Throughout the pandemic, it has been a huge focus on the health and well-being of our staff, and this is now integral to our, our staff offer. Um, we gifted people an extra day's worth of leave, but also a number of initiatives to put into place to support staff, um, wellbeing hubs, um, leads, um, some resource on each site, and these will become now mainstreamed and permanent as part of our offer and support to staff. Um, new cycle storage facilities to encourage active uh, travel. Um, I've sampled them all myself. I can tell they're really helpful and very, very popular amongst our staff. So quite a big piece of ongoing work around staff wellbeing um, and to support people. Part of this comes from our charity. We're extremely grateful to Bart's charity for all their support. Um, over £11 million of charitable donations uh, last year. Uh, we pulled out just a few examples, nearly £2 million for a, the vein to vein blood tracking system. Um, a game to help people transition to adult services and an investment to create some homely spaces at St. Bart's. But lots of examples here where Bart's Charity do an excellent job in supporting us and our staff and, of course, our patients. So in terms of looking back at last year's objectives, um, still in the midst of COVID, still trying to deal with elective recovery as those waves diminished. Um, so what was the focus and how did we do? So we were really focused last year on creating an outstanding place to work. Um, our priorities are there on the left hand side of the screen. Um, and I can, we're really proud of some of the efforts under our We Belong inclusion uh, strategy. So increase the diversity of our leadership by a further 3%, and that's 10% over the last five years. And it's an important piece this, we put a lot of effort into try and make a difference. And 
underpin this with some cultural intelligence work for all of our staff and a career progression framework. And I think it's, you know, there's a lot more to do in this area, but we're starting to see some signs of genuine um, statistical improvement alongside what staff are saying to us about fairness um, and equity. I've touched on improving facilities for our staff, um, storage hubs, psychological supports um, on an ongoing basis to support staff. Working with NHS England around retention, flexible working, um, career developments, um, really quite keen to pursue these ways of working because our workforce is the most critical um, part of our, um, our offer, if you like, and our workforce very much determines how patients get their care and how we do in terms of patient outcomes. And then lastly, we've recruited extra nurses from overseas and continue to recruit, recruit to specialist areas, including critical care and anaesthetics. I'm very much listening to what patients are saying and trying to turn so-called I statements about what a patient may say into we statements and definitely trying to um, then turn those into practice. So there'll be a lot more work on this going forward. Um, you can see the examples on the screen there about what patients are saying and how we turn them into statements that we will then use to resonate with our own staff um, and follow those through. On financial performance, um, as you can see, we um, did well um, and we spent all of our money efficiently, nearly two billion pounds of taxpayers' money um, with a very small, um, very small surplus at the end of the year. And I think that's a, that's an achievement of financial balance for the second year running. Of course, we had to control those costs under the difficult circumstances of the pandemic um, and work as part of a broader northeast London system around financial balance and challenge. Looking forward, it's going to be a bit more tricky because we're now sort of getting back to some of the previous financial regimes, um, a lot more focus again as to ways of COVID have moved forward around um, productivity and efficiency, making sure we stretch that, that taxpayer pound um, the best we can. And you can see also we spent over £94 million in capital funds across all of our sites and there's some amazing things there have gone into the environment. So a multi-year fire remediation program at Newham, we've touched on this at our, our public board meetings, but alongside improving the safety of the environment, because that's what a fire remediation program does. Of course, also trying to improve the aesthetics, um, improve the environment for patients and for staff. We've got on with the enabling works for the Whips Cross redevelopment, and of course, continuing to push hard with our um, um, political and uh, NHS central bodies around securing that long-term funding for the hospital, but some great progress there. Lots of work around clinical equipment, ICT, uh, so information technology, electronic prescribing I've touched on, and a big investment to help elective and diagnostic backlog, um, including a new community diagnostic hub at Mile End. Um, lots of imaging equipment and an excellent piece there. You can see the tooth on the screen around Improving paediatric uh, children's dental surgery at the Royal London Hospital Dental Hospital. So if we look forward then, our priorities for the next year are threefold really. So the first thing is about continuing to transform care for our patients and very much trying to address with our system partners some of those health inequalities. So we've opened up some new operating theatres at Newham, we're expanding the intensive care unit. We're expanding the intensive care unit at St Bart's. I was, I was just there today looking at the, the, the site of that. Very much working closely with GPs to manage demand for outpatients in urgent care and um, continuing to push our work around surgical centres of excellence um, and the workforce then to support that alongside local uh, patient safety champions and a safety culture across our hospitals. Second area continues that theme of inclusivity. I've talked before about um, some of the initiatives we've seen improvements on under our We Belong strategy, which was relaunched in February. Um, you can see there from the top there, as I mentioned, about increasing diversity in our senior leadership um, with staff in the main categories above band 8A roles. It continued to increase. We've got another session with network leads this Friday to talk through how we continue to push that further and make sure we are providing a fair and inclusive and equitable environment for our staff. And then thirdly, continue to build on 
what I believe are very effective partnerships um, and then deliver that sort of social value for our local communities. Um, we had the most recent Secretary of State, um, bar one, back to Whips Cross. We'll continue to make sure we work with partners about that. Such an important investment for local people in the Waltham Forest and beyond. We've got the planning proposals in train for the redevelopment of Whitechapel into a life sciences hub. Um, and then we've got a huge campaign around Bart's 900th uh, that a number of out last night were at St. Bartholomew the Great for the Founders Day celebration, which is kind of kicking off the church aspect um, of the 900 and the heritage campaign to invest in a new breast cancer centre at St. Bart's, a clinical research facility at the Royal London, as well as um, the heritage about, um, you know, revitalising and refurbishing the, the grade one listed buildings at St. Bart's, which has got such a fantastic history. Um, the top right hand corner there, you can see the Bart's Health Green Plan, really working hard around a sustainable future, um, not just across Bart's Health, but across um, other partners in North East London as well. So just to touch across other partners then, so we're working with um, BHRUT, uh, which I'll come on to in a second, but also more broadly with the Homerton University Trust um, as well, in terms of what's known as a kind of an acute provider collaborative, which basically means the hospitals in the northeast London patch, you can see the boroughs there, working together um, to respond, not just to challenges during the pandemic, but looking forward about how can we work together or utilising some of that learning. So very much trying to look to address together some of those inequalities in access, um, patient outcomes, mutual aid, so patients have more choice in terms of where they might get treated across hospitals um, and also for improving taxpayer value. So we continue this year to focus on a number of clinically led programs, um, very much trying to deliver some sort of kind of quick wins that make a difference for patients, help some of those access and waiting times issues I've described, but also have a longer term sustainable impacts and improvements. And in our closer collaboration with Barking Haven Redbridge Trust, um, it continues. We've got a joint chair, as you know, who's, um, who's, who's obviously chairing this meeting. Myself now as a joint uh, group chief executive between ourselves and BHOUT three joint non-executives and a number of senior leaders kind of working across the organisations um, increasingly so. We published our memorandum of understanding um, recently about that and we've seen a number of mutual aid benefits here where patients moving um, from Bart's Health to BHOUT for scans and procedures during um, the sort of elective recovery phase of the pandemic Lots of shared learning to reduce weights to support um, specialties and also across the urgent and emergency care system and very much working with joint solutions that become more sustainable um, for both trusts. So we're continuing to work on a couple of key clinical work streams, so urgent emergency care in particular, but also that planned and elective care um, and then key enablers around finance, um, informatics, um, so in terms of new digital systems across the BHR and working together, and then crucially people, our workforce, there's a huge opportunity to work together um, to get the right staff in the right places for patients. But of course, that's not all the partnerships. Um, we've got lots, so I won't read them all out on the screen, but just other examples of people we work with. Clearly, um, the North East London Integrated Care System is a, is a fundamental partner for us. We're very much a part of that and a partner as well. Um, we work extensively closely with Queen Mary University of London, of course, as our as our key academic partner. And I've mentioned Bart's charity, who just do an absolute fantastic job in supporting um, all the trust does and what our patients want. So, Jackie, that's um, hopefully a helpful run through um, the previous year and some of the look ahead. And um, of course, very happy to take any questions for myself or our executive or board colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shane. And, and as I said at the beginning, um, Shane is also joined by um, executive colleagues and other uh, board members who are happy now to take questions if there are any. We haven't had any in the chat yet, but if anybody would like either to put something into the chat or to raise their hand, now is your opportunity to do that. And you do that by going to the bottom of the screen and clicking on the hand uh, signal. And if that's something that you would like to do, now is your opportunity.
I'm just going to give, as I know what it's like sometimes to try and find the right button to click on, I'm just going to give people a few seconds to decide whether or not they would like to ask anything. Okay, well, we have recorded this presentation and we will be placing it onto our website. So if you're watching this on the website and you have questions that you would like to raise with us, please feel free to um, get in touch in order to raise any issues that you might have. For now, thank you very much to everybody for attending. And once again, thank you to my um, board colleagues for uh, attending. They would have been great had you asked many questions, by the way. Um, and I hope if you are traveling anywhere, even if it's only to the kitchen to get a cup of tea, uh, that you have a safe journey. Thank you very much, everybody.